Hey, Sean Jantz here. I'm going to do a quick battle plan for Friday, May 20th. I'm going to do it on slash GS, which is the S&P 500, and slash TF, which is the small cap 2000. I'm going to start here on slash GS. It's the S&P 500. And I always start on the four-hour chart. So this is what I call the anchor chart. So we take all of our bias from the four-hour chart, as far as bullish, bearish, oversold, overbought. We take all of our bias from the four-hour chart, and then we go to our smaller time frames to time our entries. And I'm going to try and make that. I know I'm getting this out late. I'm going to try and uh, record this, try and make this super quick so you can watch it and, and then basically know what to do uh, for the U.S. session or for London session, which starts not too far away, right? And so when we look at the four-hour chart, <clears throat> going, in, uh, to, going into the close of the day, um, we actually hit a really, really good four-hour candle uh, buy trigger. And a lot of people were able to buy a bunch of strikes underneath there. I was, and I know several other people did as well, were able to buy. Um, today, price tanked, and then we caught the buy trigger, and then we've made a nice, nice, pretty hefty move um, all the way back up into that middle blue Keltner, right? So we've made a nice move all the way back up into the middle blue Keltner. So um, this chart has, we're basically going into Friday, we're basically um, smack dab stuck in the middle. So this chart has plenty of room, as you can tell, right? This chart has plenty of room to continue to go back down to go lower tomorrow. Let's write that number down, uh, right down 30. Um, to 28 so this has more room to go lower of course 30 to 28 and then of course as you can see this still has more room to go to the upside as well let's write that down let's write down 57 through 59 uh, back up to the upside and then we're currently right there smack dab at the middle basically decision time right um it needs to make a decision. I can't promise you, tell you which one exactly it's going to be. When you go over to the one hour chart, you can see, look, as we speak, we're, we're, we're trying to form a one hour sell trigger as we speak. See that? See, it's already telling me oversold, sorry, overbought. Let's go. See how it's kind of coming up, reversal stars, reversal stars coming up into the resistance there. And then this is already overbought, telling me, like, hey, let's go. So I do want to write these numbers down as well. Um, middle blue Keltner on the one-hour chart. Let's write that down. Uh, let's write down, um, that's going to be 41 to through 39. Uh, There's the middle blue Keltner. And then all the way back down to the downside. Let's write that number down. 33 through 31. So I've written down the uh, 30 through 33 multiple times, and then I have the 41 through 39, which hopefully you've been watching all week. I've written down uh, 40 multiple, multiple times. I've written down the 40 level multiple times on my notes throughout the week. And so now we go over to the plot chart. And as you can see, obviously the bulk bears have been in control of this chart. There's our five day high. And then we went lower, higher low, lower low, Okay, higher low, lower low, and then here we are. All of that move to the upside is coming, as you can see, from the four-hour chart. So let's just quickly, quickly go over the uh, the opportunities on this chart for tomorrow. Okay, and so the first, let's quickly talk about if this chart goes lower. So for buying opportunities back down to the downside, the numbers I wrote down, I wrote down 41 through 39 on that one-hour chart, which is the one-hour middle blue Keltner. See how the one hour chart is super overbought? I can't imagine that this isn't gonna wanna make its way all the way back down to settlement and value area high. And then once it does, we can be looking for our buy triggers right there at settlement and value area high right there, right? So we can absolutely be looking um, for our buy triggers right there. That's the first stop as you can see right there, right? So buy value rate high can absolutely hold a support, okay? Then um, I'm not against looking for even for the support trigger to happen right there on Friday's PLC, which is tomorrow's PLC, okay? This is basically 2035.8 is where most of the volume was on Thursday. So it could be either one of those, okay? Now let's quickly talk about this. If we get through Friday's 
uh, POC. We could be in store for tomorrow for an 80% rule back down to the downside. The numbers I've written down to the downside, I've written down basically I wrote down 33 through 28, which guess what 28 is? 28 is basically value area low. So how to play this is once we get, if we get through Friday's POC, we then hold pullback on a one minute or a five minute chart, hold pullback, and maybe it could hold pullback one more time, and then 80% chance we go down there and touch value area low, which is also exactly to the tick um, the minus 0.5 deviation. So let me draw that one more time. Get through, hold pullback. 80% chance you're going to run down and touch the minus 0.5. And then take your profits right there for, there's again, that's a spread trade opportunity all the way down there. And then take your profits right there because you're going to want to take your profits here because this can hold as support right there. So I want to show that as well. So then you can potentially have another potential. Um, buying opportunity right there on value area low, which will also be exactly where the bears took it um, on Thursday. So you can see, kind of see how it all comes together. Now, quickly, if we bust through minus 0.5, I have nothing question marks if we bust through minus 0.5. I'll probably just call it a day if we do that. You know, 520, you know, it's Friday. Um, I probably won't mess with this chart if we get through the minus 0.5. Hopefully you were able to spread this down, take profits, call it a day. Call it a Friday, go have some fun, okay? Now let's quickly talk about if we go higher. The only place for me to look for my sell triggers, um, if, sorry, yeah, sell triggers if we go higher, the only place that I can be looking for triggers is gonna have to be that plus 0.5 right there, okay? <clears throat> and the numbers I've written down to the upside, I wrote down 57 through 59, which is gonna put me even higher than the plus 0.5, but that's gonna be my first stop, okay? It's first gotta come up here, touch, and then I can be looking um, for my triggers forming, especially on a one minute uh, lower high, and I it's gotta touch plus 0.5 first before I can look to sell this chart, but if 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 somehow, and I don't know if it's going to make it because of the one hour chart is going to is so oversold up here, but I'm trying to plan for everything right. If we get through plus 0.5 and hold pullback, the numbers I've written down 57 through 59 is going to be from here to here, and I'm going to go ahead and and go up even higher because you got two POCs and a plus one up there. So if you get through plus 0.5 and hold pullback, you have take profit target there, and then you got two more take, three more take profit targets. Right there, you got two POCs and a plus one deviation. Again, I wanna, re I wanna reiterate that I don't know if it can make it do that because of the one hour chart. So I don't know if it will be able to make it all the way um, up to that plus one, but I got, look, notice how I have a plan for literally everything the chart goes tomorrow. We got a plan for it, right? Now I'm gonna just quickly, the the uh, concepts are the exact same, these charts are the exact same. I'm just gonna quickly go over this because it's the exact same concept. You do have potential buying opportunities, value area low, and then you have buying opportunities, look at these POCs um, galore, Wednesday's POC, Friday's POC, and settlement. One of those can potentially um, look for your buying opportunities there, okay? but. If price gets through these POCs and holds pullback on right there, holds pullback, right? You're gonna be looking for to, to look for sell trades there for your spreads and then <clears throat> run that sucker all the way down to value area low to complete your 80% rule. The only way that I would even think about this is you first gotta get through this cluster. See this cluster of POCs and settlement? It's gotta get through it first before I can even think about 80% um, rule. Now, to the upside, um, notice how you have more clusters to the upside. Monday, Friday, Thursday's POC right there for potential sell triggers there as well. So this is basically, you know, sell triggers, buy triggers, get through whole pullback, run it down to value area low. So this chart's pretty solid. I almost like this chart better than ES because of the, look at this structure, right? But if you get through Thursday's POC and hold pullback on this sucker, you can look to keep on running this 
And let's quickly look at the four hour chart for targets to the upside. And we can write that number down. <clears throat> um, notice that that's basically 11, that's basically 11.08 to 11.010, um, which is going to be pretty right there, plus one which is 11077, which is basically that 1108 that I just said. So your target's going to try and be your target there with that plus one. If you want to look for spread opportunities uh, to the upside, and notice this is basically exactly where the bulls went here. See that right there? They went to the 11067 right there, and then they went basically to the 1109 right there. So if you get through whole pullback, you're likely to probably keep on running. But notice, look at this resistance here, right? see all of that resistance there so there's your first sell trigger but if it gets through holds pullback you can see how i have a plan for everything so comment if you have any questions make sure you're recording everything you do and also take pictures of all of your trades as well